Hello there, welcome to the channel, this is Nerdworld, and I'm back using my camera. But I apologize for any echoey sound you might be hearing, I'm kind of in a little alcove at the moment. It's the only place I've got to set up my computer to do this recording at the moment while I'm doing the rest of my house. But, that won't stop me, let's keep going. This episode is going to be about the USS Stargazer, and I recently watched the first episode of Picard Season 2 and loved it, because it was basically starship porn. And it made me feel a little inspired. I wanted to do an episode on the Stargazer, but I'm not going to do one on the Stargazer from Picard because I want to know a little bit more about it rather than reaction. I might, I'll mention it in this video, but mostly this is going to be about the Constellation class USS Stargazer, Captain Picard's first command in Starfleet, a rundown, beaten up old ship dating back to the late 23rd century. But I think it was a beautiful little vessel. It fit in very well with the, with the design aesthetic of the era. And I do like four nacelle starship designs, I have to admit. I mean, I really like the Prometheus, even though it is a bit of a overpowered goliath of a ship. But it lives up to its name, I suppose. I do like the four nacelle designs, and we're going to talk about this one today. Please like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and let's get started. The USS Stargazer was a Federation Constellation-class starship in service with Starfleet. The vessel's registry was NCC-2893 and was commissioned in 2326. The vessel was a four-nacelle designed starship designed principally for scientific research and exploratory missions, although it was a capable combat vessel in its own right, being of a design legacy dating back to the 23rd century, where ships were sometimes a little more combat orientated than they were during the Golden Age of ships such as the Galaxy Class Starship. In addition to this, this vessel will be distinguished as being the first vessel that Captain Jean-Luc Picard would gain command of. This would actually be a battlefield commission, as the ship's commanding officer was killed and Picard took command of the situation. He would later be appointed permanent commanding officer of the vessel in response to his actions by Starfleet, who were quite impressed with him. This vessel also had a young officer on board and friend of Captain Picard's known as Jack Crusher, the husband of Beverly Crusher and father of the annoying Wesley Crusher. He was killed on an away mission while serving aboard this vessel. The ship would also participate in the Cardassian border wars and was instrumental in initiating peace talks with the Cardassians, although it would be noted that Picard's gesture of good faith with the Cardassians was not rewarded because he lowered the shields of the ship and the Cardassians decided to take advantage of that um, naivete. Something that Picard would learn is a sort of a hard lesson for the future. You don't drop your shields and so you really know for certain they're not going to shoot at you. The vessel would distinguish itself most notably, or the most famous incident, should I say, for the vessel was the Battle of Maxia. This was a battle that took place between the USS Stargazer and an unknown alien vessel that we would later learn was a Ferengi pirate ship of some kind. The Ferengi vessel would attack the Stargazer unprovoked, and although Picard would ultimately be successful, he initially took a lot of damage and he invented what became known as the Picard Maneuver, a very infamous battle tactic where he basically used a micro warp jump to make the vessel appear as it was in multiple locations simultaneously, confusing the Ferengi just long enough for him to take advantage and destroy them. This action would come back to haunt him in later life when the father of the commanding officer of that Ferengi ship would seek vengeance against him, although this was very un -Ferengi like But ultimately, although the vessel was abandoned, it was actually salvaged by the Ferengi and then returned to him as a gift. But that's another story. The vessel now resides in the Federation Fleet Museum as obviously this classification of ship, although still in limited service, mostly in civilian hands or in training missions or in some kind of fleet reserved by Starfleet. The Stargazer itself was too old and as Picard himself put it, the ship seemed like it was overworked, underpowered and always in danger of blowing itself apart. So that is paraphrasing him, but that's basically what he said. Basically, the ship was buggered and it wasn't really worth fixing. Plus, it was decades by this point, also out of date. That was when it disappeared. In addition to that, it had now been rusting in some Ferengi hold for a while. So, you know, 
not in its best condition. But that is the USS Stargazer, and to touch on it, spoilers for Picard, by the way. If you've not seen Season 2, Episode 1 of Picard, end the video here and thank you for watching. There is a USS Stargazer in Star Trek Picard, a legacy ship of this vessel, which Picard is quite happy to be aboard. It's a little different in design, but it's clearly an early 25th century version of a Constellation class. It's clearly of the, not only of the design lineage, but strongly takes inspiration from that design, if not being an actual Constellation class, basically given 25th century upgrades, including some Borg technology, which as of right now in the upload of this video, I've only seen episode one of Picard, that's all that's been aired. So I don't really know fully what capabilities the ship has or exactly what Borg technology was being employed aboard the vessel. So that's why I'm not doing a video on that ship just yet. I like to know a little bit more about them. The Constellation class starships that I'm talking about, the early 24th century version, were in many ways a pretty standard vessel. I said they were tactically competent. They had multiple phaser emitters. These were, of course, the precursor technology to the phaser strip. A phaser emitter was a, an evolved version of the phase cannon that had been used by Starfleet before that. Phase cannons, of course, were used aboard Enterprise. And these, effectively, the main difference between these weapons was energy output. It's kind of like the difference between to put it in a, a context now, it's meant to be the difference between, let's say used rifles, it's the difference between a musket and a machine gun. Yes, the musket's still dangerous. Yes, it can still kill people, but it's shorter range, less powerful, less accurate than the machine gun. A modern day 21st century assault rifle is much more advanced, even than the kind of weapons that were being used like the Lee Enfield rifle of the First and Second World Wars the modern versions are much more advanced. That's basically the difference. It's the same base technology, still uses gunpowder, repellent, a rifle and bullet, and it, same basic tech, but the implementation, the materials, the construction methods, everything are so improved that the weapon is significantly more deadly. And it's the same with the phaser emitters. They were orders of magnitude more powerful. Also, phase cannons had a habit of being intermittent in their power. If you actually look at the beam of a phase cannon, it's more raggedy. There's a lot more energy bleed on the weapon than there is on those of the phaser emitters. But phaser emitters were less efficient than those of a phaser strip, not only because a phaser strip allows a greater concentration of energy, it can also fire multiple beams from a single strip, it also allows for more broad coverage. The weapons of the Galaxy class Starship, for example, were immensely more powerful and also even though it had technically fewer weapons probably than I think the original Enterprise Constitution class starship, the Enterprise D Galaxy class actually had better coverage because the phase strip was a better design of weapon, it was more efficient. And these ships carried the predecessor tech, the phaser emitter, that's the basic difference between those weapons. Bonus little facts in this video for you. Now, in addition to that, this vessel also contained photon torpedoes, but these were not special. They were just standard photons of standard issue to start with. Shields were also a standard issue. And although it had a structurally robust hull, it was not a warship. It didn't have things like a bladed hull armor or enhanced hull plating. The vessel had standard hull protection, which was good. A good, strong titanium hull. It was designed to take damage. It was designed to take a bit of a pounding, certainly, but it was by no means a warship. This was not a combat vessel so you wouldn't expect it to have. But it did have impressive defensive capabilities all the same. So, that's the ship. That is the Constellation class. USS Stargazer. Now, if you did make it all the way to the end of this video and you didn't mind any spoilers for Star Trek Picard showing that very beautiful vessel that they have in that, which I will cover at a later date, of course, when I get through these multiple other vessels got to get through so many ships in Star Trek. Seriously, star it's starship porn. Anyway, made a lot in the video. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.